Hi everyone, this is Andrew. Uh, this will be my third JavaScript tutorial. Today we'll be revisiting the quadratic equation, but this time we'll be using a form instead of regular input. And we'll use the quadratic, uh, we'll use the quadratic formula. Okay, so go ahead and create a blank text file. Uh, just name it quadratic.html and open that up in your favorite uh, text editor. I've just gone ahead and created a skeleton here. So put doc type as HTML, enclose everything in HTML tags, have a head uh, element as well as a body. Now within the head, we need the meta tag with the char set UTF-8, uh, a title, you can name that however you want, that'll show up on the, the uh, tab of the browser, and the script section. So in the script, go, go ahead and create the uh, three coefficients, the variables a, b, and c, and we'll need an output as well, and it's just a string, so output text, and create a function called validate. I've just listed the steps here, just for my own notes. So we need to get the input from the user, so we'll use a form to do that. We need to validate each of the coefficients, a, b, and c, then we need to calculate the result, using the quadratic formula, so x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that divided by 2a. And then we need to output the result, or errors if they've inputted uh, incorrect data. Okay, so in our first step is in our body section. Let's create a form. Uh, actually, let's create a prompt to tell them what to do. So. Just a, just a paragraph will do it. Okay, so please input, please enter the coefficients. Um, we could put these we could put these as strong, it doesn't really matter, but so please enter the coefficients a, b, I'll just copy and paste that, save me typing that every time, a, b, and c of a quadratic, quadratic equation of the form of the form a we'll put this as strong too of the form a x squared now in html <clears throat> to get special characters to get unicode characters we need to use the ampersand hash and because we're using uh, hexadecimal we need to put an X there. So ampersand, hash, hexadecimal, and 00B2, I think it is, for squared, and followed by a uh, semicolon. And can you see that, well, in this text editor, at least it's put that in italics, so it means that's a recognized way of doing it. So AX squared plus BX plus c equals zero. So that's our standard form for the quadratic equation. We'll close our strong tag. Um, let's take a look at that. So you, just, you can just run that in your favorite browser. Please enter the coefficients a, b, and c of a quadratic equation <coughs> of the form ax squared plus b equals zero. I'll just resize that a bit, it's a bit too big. <laughs> That looks fine. And now we'd like a form. Now a form, we'll need it to have a name, because we'll be grabbing that name from our script, from our function. Name, we can just call it whatever you like, my form, or input form. Let's go with input form. 
and we'll need it to do something. So for a form, there's an action. Now because we're running it, like normally these actions would be running from the server side, so we'd be running some PHP, but because I want to run this JavaScript function up here, validate, just uh, <clears throat> you have to put JavaScript first, followed by a colon, and then you can run the, you can write the function. Just like that. Um, yep, that's our form. Close our form. Now, forms require input, so we all we want is the A, B, and C, don't we? So I'll just put that, that's what they'll see on the screen, so A, then we'll put an input tag, input. Now an input requires a, a type typically, you don't have to put it, there's always defaults in HTML, but we'll put it explicitly. Type, we'll just say it's text. There are other things, there's like numbers and dates and so on, but for example the number function I think only takes an integer, but for this we'll need to take any type of number. Anyway, we can validate it all in our uh, validate function. So type equals text, so they can enter anything. The name will be, we'll call it, A is not such a great name, we'll call it the A term. And we'll say that it's required, that's a HTML, um, I guess not really a function, but if you put required, uh, the browser will automatically check if there's something inputted or not, and if there's nothing in there, it'll prompt it's, it'll prompt the user to input something. So it'll save us some time. So input type equals text, name equals a term, and it's required. Let's do that three times. For B and C, and just go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead and change the names of them. So the A term, the B term, the C term, they're all required. And we'll also want a submit button. So that's a, another type of input. Another type of input um, called, it's of type equals submit. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, um, submit query is not a very nice way to, as you see on the button, the, the default uh, text is submit query, so we can go ahead and change that default text. So that's just the value, value equals, we'll say calculate, and just say we don't want it on the line right next to A, B, and C, we want it on the following line, well we can go ahead and put a, a break in here, a line break, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, the calculate button is too close to the, t so we'll put two breaks in there. And I didn't like the size of the, I didn't like the size of the fields because we're only putting single numbers in there, or, or maybe you know up to five digits at most. So how about we set the size of each of these? I think it's just size. We'll put it to five for each of them. That looks better. So A, B, and C, hit the calculate button. Oh great, our validation's working already. That's the default HTML5 validation. You have to fill it out. So if we do that, 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 what happens? So oh, yeah, good. Looks like it's working. Next, uh, we've got the name of the form. Um, we want an output field, don't we? So that can just be a paragraph. It's just somewhere that will uh, We'll give it an ID so that we can reference it in JavaScript. The ID will be um, output, whatever, <laughs> output text. Okay, I'll go, we can close that. Great, next, so validate, so get We'll go back up to our function now. We've got everything that we want to display to the screen. We just need to get all of that into our function. So we've go we've created the three variables a, b, and c, and we've got an output text variable as well. So get the input. 
Oh, okay, so a will equal what? Well, it's coming from the form, isn't it? So we need to go document forms, I think it might be. Document forms form or forms. We'll try forms. And you need to put in the name of the form. So whatever you put here, input form. And then it's there's an array of forms. So we need to grab the specific field. Okay, the field will be the name of it. So it'll be the A term. And we need its value. Okay, we'll duplicate that three times and change it for each of the three coefficients. So the B term, the C term. Uh, let's just let's just see if that works first. Okay, well, I don't really know if it's working or not. <laughs> we'll uh, need to do something with A, B, and C. So first of all, we need to validate them. So we can just use if if and else here to validate it all. So if a remember a cannot be equal to zero. If it does equal zero, it's not a it's not a quadratic. So if a equals zero, so let's just use our output text as the where we can throw error messages as well. So output text will equal um, put em so that they know that it's the variable a. EM is just usually it, it's displayed as italics. So A cannot equal zero. Okay. If A equals zero, just output the text. A cannot equal zero. Now, how do we go about and output that result? Well, we need to grab the document. Um, get element by ID <clears throat> get element by ID now this is where you can just put in the ID of your output in this case it's a paragraph so I'll just grab that text there so get element by ID output text dot inner we've done this before but just inner HTML and you can just set it here what do we want to set it to just the output text. Output text. So the only thing that this will do, this program at the moment, is if they enter a equals zero, it'll create some output text. So let's go ahead and try that. Oh, that's promising. It's undefined. Let's try zero. A cannot equal zero. Great. So our first step of validation is working. What else can't A equal? So we'll just go else if here. Else if A, well it has to be a number, doesn't it? So we can use that inbuilt function, is not a number, is not a number, A. So if A is not a number, what do we want to write? We want to say A must be must be a number. Let's go ahead and try that. So that means if we type in the letter A or a hyphen or something, it will say that it's not a number, I assume. A cannot equal zero. How about minus one? Minus one should be okay, shouldn't it? Um Let's try G. Let's try something strange. A must be a number. Yep. Minus one won't do anything yet because we have it's it is valid, so it's not changing, it's not updating this field yet. But yes, if we type in just the minus symbol, hang on. We'll put zero so that we change. So A cannot equal zero. Now if we just put the hyphen, what does that do? A must be a number, yep. Okay. Now we want the same thing for B and C, don't we? Except that B and C can equal zero if they want it to. So let's just copy and paste that. So output text B 
must be a number. C must be a number. Just do a quick test. Remember these will validate in order, so if I've got all of these incorrect, it'll only validate, well the way I've got it set up anyway, it'll validate the A first, followed by B, followed by C. So A must be a number, okay, let's change that to a number, minus one. B must be a number, oh dear. C must be a number, oh geez, I know nothing about maths. Yeah, so that looks okay. Now finally, if it gets through all that, so it, it says that A is not a number and, sorry, A cannot be equal to zero. And if, so if A is not zero and A is a number and B is a number and C is a number, what do we want to do then? Well, that's where we want to calculate, calculate the result. So whatever I've got here, we'll put into this else. Yeah, calculate the result using X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. Okay, um, how about, because that results, because there's a plus or minus here, that results in two values for x. So let's go ahead and create two variables, two variables, x1 and x2. So var x1, what does it equal to? Well, minus b, which we've got now and we've validated it, well we've validated that it's a number, minus b, <coughs> we'll put brackets in as we go, minus b minus, so we'll go with the minus uh, case, there's going to be two cases, one's going to be minus, one's going to be plus, minus b minus, if, let's use some inbuilt functions, so the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so b squared, um, we'll go with the inbuilt function power, p-o-w that is, you put the value that you want to that you want to square and then you put the indice, the the power. So that'll that's equivalent to saying b squared, so math power b squared. If we wanted b cubed we'd go math dot power dot, sorry, b comma three, so that's the the superscript, the the value to be, so what's the term? Index, isn't it? The index, so squared, cubed, whatever. Okay, so the b squared minus 4 times a times c, yeah, now it's the square root of all of that, that's right, and then all of that we want to divide by 2 times a. That looks okay. Go ahead and duplicate that. The only difference for x2 is that we'll have a plus here. As per our original formula, the quadratic formula, it'll be exactly the same except that we're adding the square root of that. Right, so we've got two values for x, now we want to output it, don't we? So the output text will what? How about we say for the equation a, we'll put the equation, so we'll for the equation a x squared, now because we're outputting it through here we have to use the backslash u to output Unicode, so that's just the squared symbol, plus b x plus c, oops, getting myself confused here with all these pluses and quotes, plus c equals zero. For the equation a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, so that'll input, that'll display the actual variables they inputted, comma, how about we put all of that in bold, strong, 
close bracket, uh, close the strong tag here. Um, X. So for the equation AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, X can equal x can equal um, hmm, we'll put we'll put these in strong as well x can equal x1 x can equal x1 close the strong or x2 close the strong let's try it I'm sure there'll be some mistake yeah, go with those figures that we had before. For the equation minus 1x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0, x can equal that or that. Let's just trust that. But otherwise it's looking good, isn't it? Um, can you see here that this minus 1 is showing up? Again, in algebra we typically don't write minus 1 or 1 in front of an x term. We can just leave that, leave that out. To fix that, as you probably saw in my previous tutorial, um, just just at the output phase, you don't need to do it within calculations or anything. The calculation is correct, just the output of it. So where we've got A here, we can say, put in brackets for calculations, so if A equals 1, what do we want to output? We want to output nothing. Else output A. So only if it's 1 we don't output anything. And you can go ahead and do that for B too, because B is in front of an X. Of course change it to B if B equals 1. Output nothing, otherwise output B. And that should be okay. Let's go ahead and test that. So if those equal 1, what do we get? This result here, NAN, means that it's not possible to solve this, at least not with real numbers. So we'll go ahead and put a minus 3 into C. Yep. But here's the point, is that we've put 1 in front of the X and it's not outputting it. X For the equation X squared plus X plus minus 3, you could write some function to put a negative there instead of saying plus minus 3, you could say x minus 3, but I'm not going to do that. x can equal that. Okay, how about we try some non-1 numbers, make sure that they're working. Yeah, so for the equation 3x squared plus 2x plus minus 3 equals 0, x can equal that. Um, that's looking good. How about we go ahead and test it with some known equations. So when a, a equals 1, b equals 10, and c equals 21, I think 3 and 7, so minus 3 and minus 7 it should equal. So for the equation x squared plus 10x plus 21 equals 0, x can equal minus 7 or minus 3. Great. Uh, let's try a couple more. 4, 8, and 3. Yeah, minus 1 and a half or minus a half, that's right. And one more. 2, 10, and 0. This should be f minus 5 and 0, I think. Yep, so for the equation 2x squared plus 10x plus 0 equals 0, x can equal minus 5 or 0. And that's it. I think we've successfully used the quadratic equation to solve a quadratic... Ah, so we've used the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. And we've used a form as well so that we don't have to worry about pop-ups and stuff. Okay, thank you.